Hello, good evening, welcome to this very spontaneous last minute um, Sherman Hill live stream. Just to let you know, we're starting uh, in about 10 minutes time, 7 minutes time, 21.10. So grab yourself a cup of tea, or something stronger if you can, and uh, I'll be back in a few minutes. Once again, everybody, thank you very much for joining me for this very last, last, last minute spontaneous live stream on the uh, Sherman Hill route. We're going to be starting in five minutes' time. Uh, we're only going to be doing about uh, an hour tonight because I'm aware it's quite late. Um, but yeah, we're going to have a little go on the Sherman Hill route starting at uh, 2110, about five minutes' time.
Well, hello everybody in the chat. Welcome along to this last minute spontaneous Sherman Hill live stream, starting in approximately two minutes time. Well, hello everybody and welcome to this uh, very spontaneous last minute live stream of the Sherman Hill route. Um, so basically the reason I'm doing this is because I'm getting back to streaming properly tomorrow 8.30 with the West Cornwall local. Um, I've moved my computer about a bit and replugged it in and all my settings have completely gone all over the place and uh, yeah, I just want to check everything's working really. So I thought, uh, I thought we'll have a little go on Sherman Hill, we can have sort of an informal, easy going live stream if you like. Um, and, uh, and kind of see how we get on, just check the settings and everything are okay. So if the volumes are not right, guys, if the lip sync's not right, if there's anything not right, do flag it up in the chat and I'll get it sorted before we do a proper uh, proper live stream tomorrow night. So um, before we jump in, as always, all the opinions and everything expressed within this video are solely my own, may not reflect those of any companies I may be employed by or associated with. Sloffy, new background, indeed, yes. Um, it will be green screen eventually. Uh, I had to go with that earlier, but my lighting setup's not quite good enough at the moment, but it will be a green screen with um, something fancy behind it. So I've got to have a bit of a play with that. Um, so as many of you know, I've been made uh, an official ambassador for Dovetail Games now, so I am required to tell you that the Sherman Hill route has been given to me uh, free of charge by Dovetail Games. But they've been very open in saying they want us to be honest about what we think about the route and stuff like that so they don't want us to dress it up and wrap it in cotton wool if we don't like it we're free to say so uh, they've got absolutely no influence over what i say in this video um, but i am required to tell you that they've given us the key um, completely free of charge so let's jump straight into uh Tracy world and sherman hill and i've got it loaded up already hopefully this is going to work we there we go so, look at my hair, crikey, that side. You can tell this is spontaneous and late and kind of last minute. <laughs> so, we're driving the um, SD70 locomotive, which I must say looks and sounds superb. Um, credit to Dovetail, they've, I mean, I've never actually seen one of these in real life, but it does look beautiful. The whole route looks beautiful. So let's jump inside, and we're going to be driving from, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong, uh, Laramie Yard to Chayin Yard. I know I am definitely pronouncing that wrong, <laughs> but yeah, me, me and pronunciation, you know how it is. So I've had this game since uh, yesterday, I was given um, early access to it, and I was having real issues getting the train to move yesterday. 
So, if you work through the um, tutorials on this the SD70 locomotive, it will tell you to go into the um, brake settings menu. You need to set your air brake to cut in and uh, lead, which is absolutely fine. But what it doesn't tell you, and this is actually uh, a real life thing as well, what it doesn't tell you is your um, reservoir. So you need 90 um, 90 bar, I believe it's measured in, uh, in your brake pipe in order to get the brakes released. Now it's normal on freight trains for the front of the uh, train to release before the back of the train because the pressure needs to, needs to reach the rear wagons in order to pump them up and release the brakes. So what you do need to keep an eye on is your rear number here. So it's telling me the pressure at the rear of the train is 75 which is good which means the rear of the train would have released. It does take about 10 minutes to actually pump up to 75 so if you're trying to move you're not going to get very far. So that's the mistake I was making yesterday. I wasn't waiting for the um, the brake pressure to come up fully. So if you are going to play this, just, just do bear that in mind. So without further ado, I am going to um, set this thing up, the bits I haven't done. So we'll get some lights set. Horn. There's no working bell on this one at the moment, but that is something they're aware of and uh, they're doing something about. If you press the bell, it's kind of not doing as it should do. So, we're going to go into forward. Uh, we're driving the full length of the route, which takes just over an hour in this case. Just checking to see if we have got a green there. And we're going to try and get this thing moving. So, let's <laughs> see if I have more success than I did yesterday. I'm going to take power notch free and I'm going to watch the amps come up on the power. I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do is I'm going to set my uh, engine run generator and fuel pump to on. Then I'm going to take power notch free. See, I fully released my train brake, which is the top handle, and then the bottom handle is my locomotive brake, which is fully applied. So hopefully, we should start getting some engine amps coming up now. EOT move. I've got no idea what that means. Let's ignore it. I've, I've got all the safety systems turned off uh, at the moment because I've got no idea how they all work. So she is pulling away nicely, so I'm just going to release the loco brake slowly there. It's reasonably similar to how you, you drive a Class 66 in the UK. Um, in terms of the, the physics and the freight handling seem really, really good on this. So London Transport, yes, playing on PC. ZOD Smogless, fun fact, this loco was made by EMD, same as the Class 66. Yeah, the um, the control columns and everything are very, well actually the power throttle and reverse are completely identical to the Class 66. Paul, yes, uh, move went reasonably well, I lost a computer monitor in the process, unfortunately. <laughs> so I've had to buy another computer monitor, one of them got uh, got smashed, which was, which was a little bit annoying. Um, but yeah, we're we're all moved in. I haven't quite got things set up how I want them at the moment, but uh, but we are sort of kind of moved in. Right, so we're rolling away nicely. I'm going to give this thing a little bit of power and see if we can't get it going. So you want to be notching it up slowly. You don't sort of want to be whacking it open. You can see the amps coming up on the um, heads up display there on the right. Coming up now, 88, 89, 90 amps. Um, as that increase, you want to sort of watch that, and as it settles, then give it another notch of power. If you just take full power, you're going to get a lot of wheel spin with this. So like I said guys, uh, this is just an impromptu kind of last minute. I literally only decided to do this 20 minutes ago, um, kind of live stream. Uh, planning on doing the West Cornwall route tomorrow, which will be at the normal time of 20.30, uh, half past eight. So I kind of just wanted to check the settings are right, check that the internet connection is not playing me up, um, and uh, just check everything's okay. Sloffy, this background is still quite cool. <laughs> it's yeah, one thing about this house we've moved into, it needs it needs a bit of updating and a bit of decorating. So I give it another notch of power. Let's get her going. If you are here then you are of course very welcome and please do hit that like button and if you haven't already do subscribe to DadRail. I've got a challenge going on as many of you know about, I've got to reach 10,000 subscribers by Christmas. If I do reach 10,000 subscribers by Christmas my son Joshua is doing the washing out Christmas day. 
So uh, if I don't, I've got to give him 20 quid. So come on, guys, hit that subscribe button. Save me the washing up. Save me 20 quid as well. I've, I've just had to buy a new computer monitor, you know. So we are a um, multi multi-modal train. Three locomotives. Feeling lovely. On a um, 0.4% uphill gradient. I'm going to open the window as well because I think it sounds a bit better with the window open. I have got the Discord up and running as well guys, so if you are in the Discord server you can post your pictures over there in the live stream um, pictures page. Anything railway related that you want to post in there you're more than welcome to do so and I shall get it up on the screen. Talking of American trains, there we go, PG350 has posted Grand Canyon Railway. I've got no idea what loco that is because my knowledge of um, American stuff is really, really poor. But if you're not in the Discord then there is a link in the description below. Johnny Simulator Gaming, I have my gaming set up in a corner of my bedroom. Yeah, I'd love to do that, Johnny, but I share a bedroom with my wife and she's not so keen on the idea. She'd rather have a dressing table with makeup and that sort of thing on it. So <laughs> it's, it's all about compromise, I'm afraid. I've, I've got a nice corner of the living room. I've, I've actually, I'm supposed to be in the opposite corner of the living room over there, uh, but I can't get there at the moment. So I'm, quite, I'm kind of in kind of a, a makeshift thing at the moment. Right, so I am going to bring the front back a bit. Again, what I should be doing is bringing it back nice and slowly, so one notch at a time. The, in my opinion, the physics on this are fantastic. If they were to take the physics on this and apply it, and even the sounds actually, and apply it to the Class 66, they would have a really, really good uh, train. And this drives like I would expect a freight train to drive. Um, like I was saying about the brake pressure coming off at the back, it surprised me that that had been simulated because it certainly hasn't on the Class 66. So uh, yeah, no, Dovetail have, have done a really good job with this. Um, going uphill as well, you lose a lot of speed. I mean, I was I was doing a run in the opposite direction earlier on, crawling up the hill like 15, 20 miles an hour, it seemed like forever. Yeah, Johnny, the joys of being married. <laughs> it has its benefits as well. I get me laundry done. Get me, get me lunch made. <laughs> she, she's upstairs in bed, so I have to say that. <laughs> I guarantee she's not watching either. I think it looks really good. I think they've done a really good job of this. So, LD Smongers, I've heard an American driver say that they don't go a single mile an hour over the speed limit, no pressure. <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, it's just as well I wasn't streaming earlier on when I played this because. I got to the end of the run, I was doing one of the intermodal services, I can't remember where I was going from or to, but I got to the end of the run, I was supposed to stop at the signal and I went straight past it. <laughs> I didn't stop in time. So, yeah, no pressure. But the, the kind of rate of acceleration for the grading and stuff is, is really accurate. I mean, we're doing sort of 40 miles an hour, we're going up here, we've got a heavy train on, and that's how I would expect a freight train to handle. Johnny Simulator. The physics of Train Sim World 2 are not as realistic as physics on other games I play. Okay. I <laughs> thought that Bridget Danny will be watching. No, she's she's putting um, she's putting our youngest to bed at the moment, so she's definitely not watching. Yes, it was Spadrail Smugglers. It was most definitely Spadrail. Easily Midlands Railway fan. Hello. So for me personally, um, and this is just a personal opinion, 
I think this route looks superb. I think uh, it's got a lot of shunting and stuff in it, which is really good if you want to do that sort of thing. But I find it a little bit boring to play it. Um, I find you, there's kind of not enough going on to keep me stimulated and entertained. Don't get me wrong, that's very, very much like driving a real train. Um, and this is exactly how it would be driving along in a, in a locomotive like this. But for me, playing a simulator, I kind of like a little bit more going on. I quite like the London commuter, Cathcart Circle, um, that sort of thing where you've got, you've got a lot more to worry about. So, being that the signals are so far apart, being that I've got absolutely no idea about how the signals work, that's why I've got all the heads up displays turned on. Um, for me, this is just a little bit too slow paced, but it does give you a realistic, like I keep saying, the physics I think is simulated really, really well. Uh, Daniel, are the American goods trains more complex than the Class 66, or is the dovetail simulation simple? Yeah, I, I think that the basic physics of how the train drives are very similar to a UK freight train um, in terms of braking systems and stuff like that. Obviously, we don't we don't have dynamic brakes on the Class 66, which you've got on here. Um, the train's longer and heavier, so the brakes take longer to come off, and you've got multiple locomotives. But in terms of train handling, um, it handles very much like a freight train would do. So I would say, if like I said earlier in the stream, if they were to take... Um, the physics from this and apply it to the Class 66 or some of the other UK freight stuff, they're definitely on to a winner. There's some real cants on these tracks. C-A-N-T. <laughs> I, I risk getting demonetised every time I say that word. There's some real cants on this track considering the slowish line speeds. Uh, Minty, the new house is wonderful. We're settling in settling in nicely uh, needs a bit of work doing here and there but uh, yeah so far so good yeah, the scenery is lovely so who in the chat has got this route and who is planning on getting it do let me know ALD, if this was the UK we would be going 75. Yeah, not necessarily ZLD, it depends on ZLD, it depends on the um, class of train. If it's a class 4 then potentially you'd be doing 75 miles an hour. Um, but to be fair, a single class 66 going uphill, 2,000 tonnes on it, you, yeah, 40, 45, um, you're going to struggle to get up to 75 mile an hour. Um, we work a uh, gypsum train which is about 1,800 tonnes from Southampton. Um, to, to Tunbridge and um, you can sort of come through easily in full power if you know that area and you'll only do sort of 35-40 miles an hour all the way up through Winchester and uh, pretty much until uh, you get to a place called uh, Litchfield Tunnel halfway to Basingstoke before you start going downhill where you pick up any speed so sort of being wide open and going nowhere is really quite normal for freight traffic Yeah, Daniel, nice to hear that uh, other people share my opinions. And that's absolutely no criticism on Dovetail Games there. You know, they, they obviously, this, this does appeal to a certain kind of uh, kind, kind of gamer. Um, so it's no criticism to them at all. Um, but for me, there's, there's just kind of not enough going on. Jonathan, good evening. We're chugging along. No, I mustn't. I mustn't sing on the streams. I mustn't sing on the streams. I feel like we've got to do something to break up the monotony of going in a straight line. So let's put the Discord up. And uh, nobody's posted in the Discord. Come on, guys. It hasn't got to be American related. It can be any railway related pictures in the live pictures page uh, on the Discord server. It'd be great to see your pictures on there. I'll get them up on the screen. If you're not in there, link in the description. Paul 
Paul Crete, same here, looks good, but not for me for the same reason. Still glad you had bought it to save us some money. Paul, um, it was provided, the key was provided by Dovetail Games, so I have not parted with any cash um, to get this route. Uh, I think for me personally, if Dovetail hadn't have provided it, I probably wouldn't have bought it. Uh, but like, I'm not. I'm not big on the American stuff at all. I agree with what um, Daniel's saying there. Give me a German or British free any day. Not so sure about the German routes. Um, not because I don't like them, because there's certainly a lot going on, because I don't understand the signaling. But that, that's more being me being lazy and not learning it, not making an effort to learn it. Sloffy, also, also if there's any Americans in the chat, happy Thanksgiving. Yes, indeed, happy Thanksgiving to our uh, American cousins in the chat. Yeah, definite win, Paul, definite win. I mean, the scenery is, is, is like, really samey. And again, everything I'm saying is is no criticism on Dovetail, because like, I can't praise the physics on this enough. And it does look really nice, it's just not, not something that really appeals to me so much. Um, and like I said, I know Dovetail have given me the key for this game, but they have said we can be completely honest and give our honest opinions. Um, so I'm not required to wrap it in cotton wool, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm going to certainly have a go, Daniel, over the next few weeks slash months. I'm going to do some German stuff. Um, master the PZB secretly. I mean, other than the horn, I haven't actually touched the controls since we departed. Um, it's just been wide open in Notch 8. So I've, I've kind of just been sitting here looking out the window. Um, yeah, which is what I was saying about not, not having much to do. You're, you're sort of more for the ride than this. She's chugging along nicely. Yeah, I've just got, um, for trades in Classic, I've just got West Coast, the West Coast Main Line South, and the Birmingham Cross City as well. So, obviously I've done Open BV a couple of weeks ago on the Cross City, so I think it's time to give the uh, trades in Classic uh, a bit of a go. But we are doing half eight tomorrow, 20.30 tomorrow, the usual streaming time, uh, doing the West Cornwall local. Going to be having a go at that. So the idea on this stream, guys, is like I said, it's really impromptu. I only decided 20 minutes ago that I was, what, 20 minutes before we started, I was going to do this. Uh, I'm just checking the volume levels and the lip sync and stuff since I've moved the computer about and unplugged everything and you're not on computers alike. So, so do let me know in the chat if the um, game volume, microphone volume is alright, whether the, the lip sync's okay with the camera, all those sorts of good things. Yeah, that's a good point, Sloth. But yeah, I mean, it gives me plenty of opportunity to kind of look at the chat without worrying about spadding or missing a station or anything like that. So yes. It's, it's pretty chilled, it's pretty chilled. Some of these trains are incredibly long as well, it's mad. I can turn it on there. Jonathan, get the Met Line and S7 in the south. Oh, okay, I didn't know the Met Line was on. I'll, I'll have a look for the Met Line. That would be quite interesting one to drive. Railquest, evening Richard. On the topic of sheds, any preference between the Eurocab or standards? Um, not particularly fussed if I'm being completely honest with you on, on both parts. Uh, I think I probably prefer the standards. Probably prefer, prefer the standards. This stream is cinematic quality. That's good to do. Hey, someone has pledged on Patreon. If that is you, thank you very, very much for doing so. I know you've done that because I've got a little animation come up. But I don't know who you are because it doesn't tell me. But thank you so much and I shall be in contact with you after the stream is finished. Is anybody counting the wagons? There's a lot.
I'm, I'm not counting. Fabian, hello. Welcome to our last minute impromptu um, live stream of Sherman Hill. We're wagon counting. I'm hoping someone's counting. Yeah, Paul, the difference between the Euro spec cab and the standard cab, they are completely different cab layouts. If someone has any pictures of the Euro spec versus the standard, you post them in the, um, in the Discord server, I'll put them up on the screen so you can have a little look, uh, Paul. It'll tell you how many wagons in the pause menu. I'll have a... 104. So what's the 8473? I don't know, 100, 104 wagons. That's mental. That is absolutely... 1.3 miles in length. That is absolutely mental. It's when the radio goes off and the signalman goes, yeah, driver, you're not displaying a tail lamp. Then you go back and check. <laughs> Do you think they carry bikes in the cab just in case? Actually, we're not displaying a tail lamp. We've got whites on the back. I don't know if that's normal for American trains. It's absolutely mental. Yeah, so we're still wide open, 0.8% grade, and we're losing speed. Um, very, very typical for a freight train, good physics. Ah, uh, yeah, engine number 8473. Just having a quick look in the Discord there. Stolen engine. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, if you've got any pictures of the, the classic cabs versus Euro spec, then put them in there, that'd be great. See, this is where if you get low adhesion, the, the train can slip to a stand, pulling a heavy train up a hill. It does happen a little bit too often, actually. So let's have a little look around the cab while it's doing that. So most of the things that we sit in the chair, most of these things are functioning. Um, you've got your engine run, gen, gen fuel, generator fuel and fuel pump switches. These switches are actually on the 66. You have exactly the same switches on the 66, which needs to be in the up position. Uh, you've got lights. You've got some other switches there that I fill around with them. The train will probably stop. Um, some other sort of light switch is going on there. And heater, of course, very important. Heater and aircon. Uh, we've got a horn lever. Attendant call. Is that like to get the drinks trolley along or something? I don't know if these trains would do passenger work sometimes, maybe. These locos would do passenger work and they would use that to call an attendant, like a guard or a conductor. No idea. Alert to reset, like the AWS. I've not got the safety systems enabled on this. And then we've got our dynamic braking handle, train brake, and locomotive brake. Let's go for a little wander. So there we go, we've got the big end, the nose end. Oh, your windscreen wiper controls are situated in the roof. Exactly the same type of buttons as the Class 66. You've got one that does that side. Does the front in a 66? These are very temperamental because the wipers are actually air operated and these are just air valves. So, yeah, back wall um, you've got your isolation switch there, which is the same as your isolation switch on the 66, which is on the um, pedestal. Uh, you've various other controls there, all of which I believe work. And you can also open up the cupboard and you've got your circuit breakers. And this looks remarkably similar to a 66 as well. Uh, obviously these are all built by EMD. That's why they're all like 66s. 
my my wife is calling. I'm, I'm turning privacy mode on. And I'm back. <laughs> so yeah. Um, oh, dropping frames there. So yeah, we got a second man seat um, over here, which is really nice. And then ice box must supply with an ice tray when serving, which is that's like luxury. And I believe if you come down the stairs here, you can get out to the front of the train. Um, but I believe in real life, where is it? In there is a toilet. I believe that is where the toilet is located on these locomotives. So yeah, really nicely well detailed cab. Um, cab lights there. Uh, seats work. Radio. Yeah, really, really nice job. Zonar Abyss. Sorry, I can't pronounce your name. If you could take free trains, what would you combine? Uh, how do you mean one could take free trains? If you haven't already, guys, then please do hit that like button and also consider subscribing to Dad Rail. I want to win the challenge with Joshua. I want him to do the washing up Christmas Day, so I need those 10,000 subscribers. So, if you know anyone else that might like my content, any groups or anything, please do share them out. Uh, good evening, Lawrence. Welcome to our last minute, unadvertised, spontaneous stream. Nitrax, the cab seat looks so comfortable. Yeah, it does, to be fair. They've got heated seats with like massages and everything built in. The <laughs> the three seven fives are actually got heated driver seats. It didn't work very well. They've got heated driver seats. So yeah, look, one point six percent gradient, and our speed is just falling off. Um, again, I I haven't touched the control since we started moving, so I'm just kind of sitting here looking out the window, which is very very typical of driving a freight train. Um, but yes, yeah, it's not enough going on for me. <laughs> Erpo, British tanks have integrated tea kettles, American train engines have ice boxes. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> uh, new house is good, thanks Lawrence. Um, we're not quite settled in fully yet, but we are certainly getting there. Um, as you can tell by the, the nice, when we about the way, the nice kind of freeze and wallpaper behind me. It needs a little bit of modernising and updating. Um, plan is eventually to have green screen behind me so I can put a nice background up. Um, that's not. Uh, I had a little play a bit earlier, but I need to update my lighting setup um, to accommodate that properly. Yeah, John M. Are any of the cab seats on a spring system uh, on trains like you're driving trucks? Yeah. Um, some of the seats in the 66s, not all of them, because they're not consistent. Are we sit on like an air cushion and, and they bounce up and down, it's really comfortable. ZLD in the US, a banker loco is called a DPU distributed power unit and comes sometimes be somewhere in the middle of the train. I don't know why. I wonder, ZLD, if that's got anything to do with um, the brakes, it being in the middle. Um, and what I mean by that is obviously to release the brakes on a freight train you have to have positive air pressure 
so you can see that we've got 90 bar in our um, brake pipe so you've got to have positive pressure to release the brakes all of the air pressure comes from the locomotive there's compressors on the locomotive which then charge the brake pipe um, that air has to travel through all the wagons to the back of the train so the, the brakes at the back of the train release after the brakes at the front of the train so my thinking is there if you've got a locomotive in the middle you've got another compressor in the middle so you can be charging up the back of the train with air whilst the front locals are charging up the front so I wonder if it's, if it's done maybe to get the brakes off a bit quicker that's a completely random guess um, it's a completely and utterly random guess but it's an educated one I'm sure someone in the chat will know more about American uh, I'm sure everyone in the chat will know more about American trains than I do yeah she's just losing so much speed climbing up here but that's, that's so prototypical Yeah, no worries, Lawrence. I'll, I'll have a little look um, into that for you. No worries, bud. Max, hello. We are doing Sherman Hill tonight, Max. Um, completely unorganised, last minute, spontaneous live stream. But of course, tomorrow will be the West Cornwall local at the normal time of half past eight. Um, hopefully, it'll all go well, as we might know what we're doing. But probably not. Something to do with the tonnage behind them, I'm not too sure. Oh, okay. See, the bell is actually ringing on the outside. I don't know if you guys can hear that. So I find the bell located just there by the first bogey. bell control in the cab is not functional. So I put that to off and pop outside. The bell's still ringing. Yeah, go for it John. Post a, um, providing the bot lets you post a link, that'd be really good, uh, really good reading. Let's just have a quick look on the uh, map to see where we are. I'm absolutely useless at reading this map, so I think we are... Is that us there? Ah, so we're up here as the two lines, um, where the two lines converge. So obviously we reach the summit and then you get the opposite problem. Yeah, Max, rest in peace at Dad Rail Monitor. Uh, monitor has been replaced, Max. I've got, uh, I have another one. Pig and Bob, hello, welcome to the stream. See, it looks like to me that we're going downhill now. But the, the gradient indicator is telling me we're on a 0.7% uh, incline still. It looks to me like we're going downhill. But it can be very, very deceiving. Even out on the uh, the main line, it can be really deceiving with your gradients and stuff. Lovely rock formations. It's a scenic route. There's no, there's no denying that it's quite a, quite a scenic. Route. So let's break it up by hopping over to the Discord. Uh, can't attach a picture of the Eurocab Shepherd for some reason, but this site shows a good shot of what I um, believe is even the start. Okay, I don't know why it won't let you post the pictures, that's a bit interesting. Um, no idea at all why it won't let you do that. If we've got any mods in the um, any mods in the chat. They could have a look into that, that would be fantastic. If you're not in our Discord server, by the way, guys, there is a link in the description below, and you're very welcome to pop over to there and join us. We've got a um, new section in the Discord server as well. 
uh, which is the train crew rambling. So we have the um, the Dad Row Diary, where I've been posting my kind of um, day to day life and stuff like that for a little while. But I've got um, two other train drivers in there now. I've got a passenger train driver and another freight train driver who are doing a similar thing. So if anyone's kind of signalers, shunters, anything like that, that, that wants to kind of post their day to day life and pictures within their own channel and then get in contact with me and we can, we can sort that out. So it's just kind of a like a one stop shop for information for people who are interested in, in railways and that sort of thing. Oh, thank you very much, John, for that. Yeah, combination of brake pressure, couple of stress, and avoiding slack in the consist. USA locomotives use radio instead of jumper cables for commands from the lead, courtesy of distant signal. I should imagine that could be quite temperamental, um, John. Obviously, I can understand them not using jumper cables because you can't jump through the wagons unless the wagons are fitted with jumper facilities, which, you know, considering the different number of locomotives they attach, the different types of locomotives they attach to, wouldn't be practical to do that. Um, yeah, no, that, that's, that's, that's quite interesting. Too bad, Lawrence. It's been um, been pretty full on the last couple of weeks. We've got a lot of seasonal work at the moment, um, RHT, rapid treatment trains, and that sort of thing. So it's uh, it's been full on, to say the least. But it's going well. It's going well. No, uh, it's, it's best to be busy sometimes. It's, it's better than the alternative. Right, so speed limit is going to drop to 40, but I don't think we've really got to worry about that too much. Yeah, nice one, Max. So if you haven't already, guys, then please do hit that like button. Also, consider subscribing to Devrail. 10,000 subs by Christmas Day means that my son Joshua does the washing up. If I don't reach 10,000, it means I've got to give him 20 quid. So, come on, help me get there. Help me get there. I don't want to do that washing up. I really don't want to do that. Daniel, is it true that in the UK if you see multiple locomotives, it's more likely they're simply being transported rather than being used for traction? Yeah, Daniel, that is um, that is generally speaking the case. Uh, some trains are double-headed in the UK, but normally, um, normally they won't be. The best way to tell, if you look at the locomotives, if they have a jumper cable going between them, so look between the two locomotives, you'll see a big, you've got the brake pipes down the bottom, but you'll see a big sort of like electrical jumper cable. If they've got a jumper cable between them, then potentially um, they're in multiple and they're working together. But even when you transport a loco, um, they call it dead in traffic, sometimes the engines on them are still running, um, but obviously it won't power up and isn't providing power. You, you just keep the engines running sometimes because when you get it to its destination, it's got to be split off, it's easy to shunt it around and stuff like that. Um, or you might keep it cut in because you need the, the tail lights and stuff. Um, working if you haven't got a portable tail lamp, so there's lots of reasons it might still be running. But yeah, normally one uh, one class 66 or one class 59, depending on where you, where you are, will uh, will pull more or less anything. But there are there are examples of multiple workings. Um, for example, like the the RST trains that I've been driving, if they go out of class 73s and the locomotives are actually jumping up through the wagons, so both locomotives are powering. Um, there are other examples of that, but yeah, typically. If it's a 66, generally um, I would say that two locomotives, one of them would be dead or, or certainly not pulling. Sloppy. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, Max, Josh was going to love you for that comment. Oh, we're 
really losing speed. Are we going to make it to the top of the gradient? And then we've got down the other side and we've got to watch the brakes. Ah, so right, I'm going to jump over to the Discord because it looks like we have got the top picture there, uh, the Pagnato, is that, sorry? Yeah, the Pagnato has posted, that is the um, Eurospec cab uh, on the, um, the picture there. So you can see rather than having the central pillar, uh, you've got that kind of really weird control handle and the, the seating position and everything, the cabs, are, they're not particularly ergonomic uh, in my honest opinion. Yeah, that, that is what the Eurospec 66 looks like. And an Azuma. Not had the privilege of an Azuma or the torture of an Azuma, depending on your opinion, yeah. But um, I'm sure I will have soon. John, did anyone see the video of 59003 trying to pull the sprinter out of Fisherton Tunnel? Painful, John. Painful. I actually saw a picture today of the wheel sets after they tried to pull it out. I wish I could share the picture of the wheel sets. They were knackered. <laughs> For want of a better word, they were absolutely knackered. So again, so we've been streaming for 53 minutes. So I'm going to say we've been driving, we've been driving for at least 40 minutes, and I haven't touched the controls yet. We've just been in notch eight the whole time. So I think we're getting near the summit, and then we should pick up some speed going down the other side. Yes. Yeah, so has anyone in the chat? Um, has anyone in the chat got Sherman Hill? What do you think of it? Is anyone planning on getting it? Do uh, do let me know your thoughts in the chat. I'm very interested to, to sort of uh, to read your thoughts and hear what you guys think about it. Adams, I'm going to spend a day driving the class 395. Lovely, uh, lovely units to drive the 395. Sorry, trains, hello. Sophie, I'm not going to, I'm no American rail fan. Yeah, I'm, I'm like I say, I'm very much the same, Sophie. Stephen Kelly, welcome to Dad Rail. That's one closer to 10,000. Nitrat's not planning on getting, to be honest, never really played the freight route included in the base game either. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not kind of sure, obviously, my fan base is, is, very, is very much sort of UK stuff um, and European stuff, so I'm, I'm kind of not sure sort of if Dovetail Games have got a big US following. Um, I should imagine they would have because the, the route's got to appeal to somebody. They wouldn't invest so much time and money in a route that's sort of not going to appeal. So they must have sort of a large, large US fan base. Sloffy, was the 305 in your traction card? It, um, I signed it as a shunter driver, not as a mainline driver. Um, so I was allowed to drive it in the yard and I could drive it from the yard uh, into the station and then obviously out of the station back into the yard. Um, so our job as shunter drivers, we used to prepare them in the depot in the morning and drive them from the depot into the stations um, and then the mainline drivers would take it over, do the job and in the evening we would take it off them in the station and bring it back into the depots. So yeah, the fastest we were allowed to drive was 15 miles an hour, so um, sort of fastest domestic train, domestic high speed train, well it's the fastest train in the country by Eurostar, 
and I was only allowed to drive it 15 miles an hour. Oh, we're nearly at our location where we need to be. I think this might be the summit of the gradient. Thirty-five miles. Yes, it looks like we're starting to descend now. I would say this was the summit of the gradient. So it can be quite deceiving with, with your gradients. It's still showing a 0.8 incline. I would say the train coming towards us is climbing. So we should be descending. Of course, what you've got to remember though is this train is, where are we? 1.3 miles long. So, even if the gradient does change, we still need to make sure we pull the back of the train up the hill. So, until we've got over half the train up the hill, gravity is still working against us. Yeah, Daniel, I'm going to get back into some train sim content. Um, I've just got the West Coast Mainline, like I said earlier, in the cross Birmingham Cross City for uh, train sim classics. So I, want to, I want to stream those ones out and get back into playing that. It's going to take longer than an hour if it goes on like this. Yeah, I think um, once we start going downhill, we should pick up some speed. Yeah, definitely ZLD using the dynamic brake as we start to descend. Lawrence, someone on YouTube did 8 hours on Cathcart and 9 hours on the London to Brighton line. Uh, was that uh, British Ace at all? I know British Ace was doing a, a thing like that. There was kind of a, a really good idea that I had a little while ago, and I thought, I'm sure it's been done already, but that was kind of to do like a, a whole day's running turn, if you like, as a stream to kind of work out what a driver's diagram would be for the day over a certain route and then kind of stream that. Ah, uh, that's definitely, that's definitely got to be the summit of the gradient ahead of us there. Sorrow, um, I think both have got their merits. I, I like the variety that Tracy and Classic offers, but I think Tracy well looks beautiful. Um, I think in terms of driving physics, they're both very, very similar. Right, so we're starting to go downhill now, but as I said earlier, we need to pull um, the train, the back of the train up the hill, because it's over a mile long, so we do need to make sure we pull the back of the train over. So I'm keeping an eye on the speed. Um, so I'm going to shut back a little bit. Probably till about notch three. I'm aware this could, I mean, we've got so much weight, this could run away really, really easily. And um, we've got a 45 coming up as well. Daniel, I'm Swindon born. Dad did his apprenticeship in the GWR works. I love anything GWR, hence my love for trains in general. Yeah, they've got, um, I think there's, uh, the Great Western Main Line is, is currently on sale for, I think it's 12 99 so I might go and pick that up this afternoon, or this evening, or tomorrow afternoon, um, and look at doing a stream on that route. Yeah, so I've knocked the power back, I'm just keeping an eye on the speed, because like I say, we've got to pull the back of the train over the hill. Um, then we should start to see the speed picking up. I might have notched back a little bit early there. These are kind of real, what you'd be doing in the real world if you were driving a freight train in terms of notching back. Thinking about what the back of the train's doing as well as the front of the train. But in the UK, the sort of longest trains we're doing are like, you know, maybe 2,000 feet, 2,500 feet. Um, 
this feels like over a mile. So it's, it's kind of the same principle, but just magnified. Yeah, definitely, John, the Armstrong Powerhouse stuff. Um, I particularly want to look at the Master Key Class 73 on the London's Brighton Run. The Class 73 is something I'm very familiar with, so I'd particularly like to have a little look at that one. Yeah, it's slowly starting to pick up speed now. So I'm aware we've got 45 in one and a bit miles. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take the power off completely. So we'll make sure the amps have all been gone before we go into idle. So we need to be 10 seconds in idle, then I'm going to put the dynamic brake into setup. So I'm aware we got the 45. So I'm just going to put the dynamic brake into setup, which is just kind of changing over the. Um, it turns the, the motors into generators to create resistance. So I put it into setup, it just kind of puts all the electronics and the relays where they need to be. Oh, the speed limit's actually going up to 45, so I probably want to start getting some dynamic brake in now. So I'm just going to go like dynamic 5. Now, dynamic brake will only give us brakes on the locomotives, it will not give us any brakes on the wagons. Whereas if we use the train brake, the air brake, we'll be getting brakes on the wagons as well. Yes, yeah, so you can see there we've, we've got like 28, 27, uh, I don't know what the K of is, a killer pounds or something. So speed's kind of still creeping a little bit, so I'm going to put a little bit more. we will go full dynamic. I don't really know how to use the dynamic brake, I'm not kind of too au fait with it, um, so I'm just, I'm just winging it. So this is a 45, so this does have a length counter, but it doesn't actually look like it works. Uh, the length counter to know when the back of your train has passed would be really useful in this situation. So I'm going to ease the dynamic brake back a little bit, I think. This is where it gets a bit more interesting going downhill. Uh, Stephen, I'm not entirely sure. Um, see if anyone in the, the chat knows what is the purpose of the bell on American trains. Uh, so we're actually starting to climb again now. So I'm going to... Oh, that didn't sound too friendly. Take the dynamic brake back completely. And then we'll sort of Going completely against what I was saying about letting the amps come in slowly. So, as well, I've put the power in, it takes a little while for the power to build up. That's very prototypical of, of freight, freight engines. Yeah, there's a story there, Max. When the train driver lets you in their cab and six years later you find out it was your favourite YouTuber. Yeah, so notching up slowly. Because we've got so much weight on as well, we need to make sure we're getting the power in. We've got some. Um, let's just jump over to Discord for a second. Looks like we've got some train, uh, transport fever stuff going on in there. That certainly looks like transport fever. That bottom picture there. I love a bit of transport fever. I could waste hours and hours, and have wasted hours and hours playing transport fever. I was tempted to stream it, but I, I don't know if it kind of makes good streaming or not. I think Colonel Failure does a good job of that. Yeah, who knows? Maybe one day. Maybe one day. If you're not in our Discord as well, there is a link in the description below. It would be absolutely awesome to see you over there. Um, 
Let's press that button. The bell on American trains was originally used as a warning for exposed or influenced lines. Oh, okay. Exposed or influenced lines. Yes, yeah, so if you watched my other videos, my train driver vlogs, and I mentioned in, in one of them, um, I think it was like the 10 things you need to know about being a train driver, someone said, you know, train driving can actually be really boring. Kind of imagine just sitting here, looking out the window, day after day after day after day. I mean, we went like 40 minutes earlier without touching the controls. Obviously, you're going to have your vigilance and your DSD um, going off and stuff like that. But when I said it could be boring, that's the sort of thing that I mean, you know, you could be sitting there. Most UK routes is not going to be for quite that long, but the, the principle's still the same. Oh, Zaldi, I meant unfenced. Unfenced as opposed to influenced. I did wonder what you meant by influenced. I think most lines in America are unfenced. Most lines in Europe are as well. Yes, yeah, Saro Trains, um, new simulator, Train Life. I've seen a few videos of that. It, it looks like it has potential, but I think it is very much aimed at the game market rather than the simulation market, if that makes sense. It does It does look, look quite pretty. I don't know how it drives or how it handles. Um, I might be wrong, but I think it's made by the same people who made Euro Truck Simulator. John M, anyone interested in Class 66 to check out the Irish Class 201. The, the basic design of the 66 was based on the gear for 100 miles an hour running. Oh, okay, John. I'll have a look at that. Yeah, I think, uh, Yins, I think I agree with you there. Yeah, it looks promising. Let, let them iron out the faults and kind of sort out the DLC and whatever they're going to do with it. Dadra, what's the closest you've ever been to a spad? Uh, that's quite a good question, Max. Uh, I don't think you're in the Discord server, Max, but in the Dadra diary, I posted a, an incident I had the other day. Um, basically, I was coming towards Clapham Junction. Uh, this was like two weeks ago, a week ago, two weeks ago coming towards Clapham Junction, I was going through Platform 16 to go onto the West London lines, and you always get checked down to go through Platform 16, so you can get two yellows, one yellow, red, and, and then you get junction indicator to take you into this Platform 16. So I remember going past the two yellows, acknowledging the AWS warning, I was doing about 40, 45 miles an hour, it must be 40 because that's the speed limit, <laughs> so doing about 40 miles an hour, uh, acknowledge the AWS, and I got the speed down to about 15, 20 miles an hour went past the one yellow, got the speed down to about 10 miles an hour and the next thing I remember after that is cancelling the AWS for the red. Um, I don't remember what happened between slowing the train down and then cancelling the AWS so as far, you know, I, I believe I had, a, I had a micro sleep, I was feeling very fatigued at the time. Um, so the AWS went off so I cancelled the AWS to the brake on. Just as I touched the brake the signal came come off to one yellow. Um, I would have stopped in plenty of time because I'd already completely killed the speed before the incident happened, before the, the micro sleep happened. So I would have stopped in time before the signal, um, even if it hadn't stepped up. But it, it kind of, you know, I said, I've said it in a few of the videos, fatigue is one of the biggest risk, risk factors driving trains, and I completely stand by that. And I've got no issue with like telling people I've made a mistake or saying, you know, this has happened and that's happened. Um, because they say it's not a mistake unless you've learned from it. So, you know, understand what's happened, understand why it's happened, and learn from that, and, you know, then work out what you can do to mitigate against that. Um, so mitigating against that is go to bed a bit earlier and drink a bit more coffee. So, but, um, yeah, that's probably the closest I've, I've come to having a spad. Yeah, uh, always, always learn from your mistakes, but if you can, wise words now, 
learn from your own mistakes, but if you can, it's better to learn from other people's. So we are starting to descend, so I'm just keeping an eye on speed because we want to pull back of the train up the hill. We've got grass growing out the track. So the speed's just starting to creep up now, so I'm just going to slowly notch the train back. I can do that with You're going to pause for about one second in each notch, that's the general rule of thumb if you're driving a 66. Um, I'm assuming it's an EMD locomotive, so I'm assuming it's going to be more or less the same. Um, we'll leave that for 10 seconds and we'll put the dynamics into setup. So if you haven't already guys, please do hit that like button, that would be awesome. Happy birthday for 16 days time, Max. And there we go, we're going to put the dynamic into setup. Um, Daniel, would a SPAD be instant dismissal? Absolutely not, Daniel, no. But it depends on the individual circumstances, but generally speaking, no. If you have a SPAD or an incident, you've made a mistake. You don't tell people off for making mistakes. You, you learn from that mistake and you retrain people. If someone's consistently doing it, then obviously you've then got to look at their driving record and review that. But generally speaking, you don't discipline someone for making a mistake. You, you educate them teach them, you train them, you, you develop people, you upskill people. However, if you've blatantly disregarded the rules, then that's a different scenario altogether. For example, me having a micro sleep, that's not something I've done deliberately, that could be, you know, lifestyle management, fatigue management, something like that, I, I would need to look at that. Um, however, if I was driving like a complete and utter word I can't say on the on a, on a stream, even though it's well past the watershed. If I was driving like a complete and utter, you know, um, speeding, not slowing down in time, disregarding rules, stuff like that, that wouldn't be a mistake, you know, that would that would be a deliberate act, so that would maybe result in disciplinary action. But generally speaking, a mistake is a mistake and it should be treated as such and you should learn from it. Yeah, Daniel, I like that approach and it mirrors the pilot industry. The air, the railway industry mirrors the airline industry in many, many different ways. So I'm going to put a bit more dynamic brake in. So I'm not too au fait with how to use the dynamic brake properly. Mum rail's looking at me like telling me it's getting late. We're kind of halfway through watching Benidorm at the moment. And there's some sneakers ice creams in the freezer, so... We've got 27 miles to go. Dynamic brakes doing a really good job there of holding that speed back. Yeah, Max, the reason for that is they're made by EMD, which is the same thing that the 66s are made by. Um, so I was saying, like, the control handles here and the switches are exactly the same as the 66. I'm going to release that dynamic brake a little bit. I think I should get Mumrail driving. Yeah, hashtag. We've got hashtag Mumrail in the track now, in the chat now. She's, she's laughing over there. Yeah, the dynamic brake's doing a really good job of holding that. Yeah, John, that's exactly that, you know, um, safety culture, mistakes are not penalised, but willful negligence is, yeah, that's exactly the way. And as you say, Paul, there as well, the railway's very much the same, if, you, if you've made a mistake and you're honest about it, hold your hands up, um, that's what they want you to do, but if you lie about something, if you, if you have a spad or an incident and you try and cover it up, you're pretty, they're pretty much just going to sack you there and then for lying, 
Um, but if you're honest about it, you go through the right channels, which is what you should be doing. So yeah, you know, own up to your mistakes, be honest, hold your hands up, and, and you get a lot more respect for that. Hashtag Mumrail drives a train. Nitrax, do the 69 share the 66 cabs layout or inherit a layout from the 56s? Nitrax, the 69, the 69s look like some sort of 66 and 56 love child, um, for want of a better word. But I'm not a fan of the cabs of the 69s. They've got a 66 pedestal for the power equipment, but the brake equipment is a 56. I thought they were converted from 57s. I could be wrong. 56, 57. Um, Oh look, we can do 55 now, so let's take that dynamic brake right back. I'm aware that this might, uh, we'll leave it in setup, I'm aware the speed might run away pretty quick. Get Mumrail driving the GWR 166, it is by far the easiest. Mumrail, would you like to drive a GWR 166? She says one day. I tell you what, 10,000 subscribers and Mumrail drives the train. <laughs> I really don't want to do that washing up. Mumrail says he's not doing it. Oh, there's some track missing. Missing track. Racing along now. We got a highway up there. It's an American highway. Oh, I'm not going to try to access. Where's the highway? Well, <laughs> freeway, highway. Yeah. We better get some brake in because yeah, I said this was going to start running away, didn't I? And it is about to start running away big time. So I have not got it under control, I am not paying attention. Yeah, Railquest, it is, it's not the most friendliest of designs at all. It is most definitely not the most friendliest of, of cabin designs. It's shaving a bit too much off, let's just reduce that dynamic brake slightly. Oh, the missing track is apparently like that in real life. Okay, now still, I'll take your word for it. I've only ever been to America once, and I did not see any... Well, I tell a lie, I did see some trains running around Disney World. <laughs> I did not see any proper trains. And that was, when, that was when it was down to my parents to pay. Now I've got to pay, I can't afford to go. So... <laughs> Maxwell, I can do a good, annoying, girly American accent. You're howdy there, partner. I'm the engineer on this railroad here. I'm going to take this train all the way. Sorry, is that stereotypical? <laughs> I apologise to our American cousins. I do like the American accent. I like the variety of accents kind of across the different states. Yes, the dynamic brake is just not bringing that down now, so I'm going to have to use the train brake. It's about... I just want to get the speed down. And you'll notice as well, you've got the opposite problem here. So your brake pipe's coming down at the front, but it's not starting to drop at the rear. Because it's venting from the front, it's just coming down at the rear now. Um, but applying the brakes actually kind of kills the dynamic brakes as well. So we've got like a 30% brake application in, that's not, it is just about bringing the speed down. Well, 23 miles to go. We're 55 limit, I'm going to bring it back down to... And what you'll notice now, this is really prototypical. Yes, 
Okay, so what you'll see now when I release the brake is really prototypical. Um, I don't want to release the brake actually, the speed's still picking up a bit too much. I'm going to have to put a little bit more brake in there. Oh look, we're on like a 1% downward gradient, so I think it gets a bit steeper in a minute. danger is now we're running on friction brakes going downhill which obviously generates heat they can get very hot and if you have them on for too long um, you just wear through the pads and eventually you won't have any brakes and you won't be able to stop the thing so I think potentially this is already running away I think I might have kind of misjudged my speed a little bit oh no she is coming down she is coming down Dad rail smashed window. Ah, oh, you spotted it. I'll show you the smashed window. Uh, let's see if I can do this. That one. Let's see if this works. Ah, oh, you can sort of see it. That was 601 that I smashed up after I hit a tree. Lovely. Right, so let's release the brakes. So once I release the brakes, see the brake pipe coming up but we've still got the brakes on at the rear so it takes a little while for the brakes to release fully so the train will still be slowing down so we're just waiting for the um, we're just waiting for the dynamic brakes to kick back in now Yeah, I think nitrax, I think when you apply the um, train brake, I think it kills the dynamic brakes. Whether that's prototypical or not, I don't know. Yeah, the dynamic brakes are certainly not providing enough brake force uh, now to slow this train down. Uh, there's a 45 coming up as well, so I'm going to have to get some serious brake in. Otherwise we're going to derail on the corner. Hopefully not though. Pretty please. We've come this far. Dad rail derail. Dad rail derail. It's staying upright. It's staying upright. See look how long it's taking for those brakes to apply. Look I've got like 97% brake application in. It's kind of nothing happening. It takes ages for the brakes to apply, then eventually the speed will start coming off. Good evening, Jack. Yeah, very well, thank you. Driving significantly over speeding. I can't slow the bloody thing down. Don't forget that if you use the train and dynamic brake, you need to bail off your independent brake. Yeah, my independent brake is off at the moment. Um, if it's the same as a UK, like driving a Class 66 on a UK freight train, when you apply the train brake, it automatically applies the independent brake anyway. The, the brakes on the locomotive come on. Oh, oh, it's starting to come down. It's starting to come down. But our brakes are red hot now. Our brakes will literally be so hot now. I'm just going to give it a little bit more. Can I go without going into emergency maybe? 100%? Johnny Simulator game in speed rail. <laughs> 
Yeah, I can't slow it down. It's not. It's just not happening. Game of ninety plays. Good evening. Welcome to our our stream on Sherman Hill Train Sim World Two. We're going back up to fifty five in a minute, but I'm going to leave the brakes in to kind of give us a bit of breathing space. I think. <laughs> We're back within the speed limit. Um, these brakes in, in reality would be red hot. Let's kind of pull them all the way back. Kind of want to let the dynamic brake take over. So if you haven't already guys, don't forget to please hit that like button and subscribe to Dad Brow so I don't have to do the washing up on Christmas Day. Climb out and apply the handbrakes if all else fails. Yeah, the dynamic brake just, it's not coming back in quick enough. Yeah, I, I don't know if they do, Johnny, to be fair. I, I kind of think that it's just the UK train, the freight trains in, in the UK routes just simulate. The brakes are, are simulated too good. Um, I think what you're seeing here is pretty realistic. And I think on UK trains, I mean, I would be able to slow a UK train down. You've got to be able to stop the train within 1.4, uh, one and a quarter miles. I back off the dynamic brake, does that help at all? I'm assuming I don't need to whack the loco brake on as well, but we'll, we'll do it. Yeah, to be fair, I mean, that's quite worrying now, isn't it? I've got all my brakes are on full, and we're just running away. So, I mean, in the UK, this wouldn't happen because you'd have a maximum brake force. You wouldn't have enough brake force to stop this train, which is what, what you're now seeing. So this train doesn't have enough brake force. So I'm going to put it into emergency, just to completely destroy the brake pipe, see if we can just stop it. The brake pipe's gone to zero, it should start venting at the back. You should start seeing the rear number come down to zero. So all the brakes are hard on now. You need to bail off the independent. charge the brake pipe because it's going to take a little while to come back up so hopefully that will recharge before we hit, before we end up stopping yeah there's definitely quite there's definitely an art to driving these and I certainly haven't mastered it Yeah, so you can see the brake pipes coming up. Um, I think we're going to end up stopping before that comes up. American trains spad, British trains have brakes. American trains don't have worse brakes, it's faster and more confusing ones, this engine in particular.
Yeah, I just find it a little bit concerning that you can be in you can be in basically a hundred percent service brake um, and still accelerating. That's sort of like you don't have enough brake force to stop the train. I mean, maybe I shouldn't be approaching the gradient and line speed. Maybe I should have been coming down it a lot slower. Um, yeah, John, I thought dynamic brakes worked. I thought they worked best above twenty miles an hour. I could be completely wrong. There you go, look, rear, I've got zero still, so we're still waiting. This is this is the problem, it takes ages to charge up. So we're still waiting for the brake pipe at the rear of the train to charge up. And that's gotta that's gotta come up to like 75, I believe. So if I try and pull away now, we might actually be able to get some sparks out of it. Um see if we can make it spark. This is this is experimental. Just kind of go like full power, but like I said, the brakes at the back of the train are still fully applied. That's why the, the brake pressure is zero at the back of the train. So we go into the external views. We should be grinding the rails. There you go. Sparking on the back one and on the front one. We're now a rail grinder. Yeah, and that's on a downhill gradient as well. But that is purely because, and that's one way to bug it. We're doing an impression of 60, uh, 59003. That's purely because the brakes haven't released at the back yet, and it will take about 10 minutes for that to happen. Yeah, remember the banker on the back. That's what I was saying, Zaled, is that we've got to wait for the brakes to fully release at the back. So, the, the flow indicator doesn't work on this, which is really annoying. But um, the brake pipe at the rear is currently zero. So until that comes up to like 75, 85, the, the brakes at the back are still hard on. Doopy 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 Well, this is fun. <laughs> it should be char it should be charging up. Let's put the um, loco brake direct hard on. Brake pipe 87, 88. It's going so well. It was going so well. What's going on in Discord? Let's have a quick look over there. That looks like a 150, I believe, at the bottom. No idea where, but it certainly looks like a 150. If you're not already, guys, as well, you can join the Discord link in the description below. So let's jump back into the game. Obviously, because I've used the emergency brakes, I've now got to wait for the brake pipes to fully recharge before we can go anywhere. Um, the rear is still showing zero. I'm not sure why the rear is still showing zero. That should have started to come up by now. So why is the rear still showing zero? Any idea, boys and girls? My brake is set to lead cut in. What's the DP remote disabled? Let's just give it a few more seconds to see if the rear starts coming up. Could be that the screen's glitched out. We'll try pulling away. We're on a downhill gradient, so it should roll quite nicely. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, she's pulling. I think the screen might have uh, might have bugged out there then. Dad, Ra, when's the SCR stream? Christmas, Max. Christmas. What <laughs> makes a long drive more boring? ATA. Right, we've got 14 miles. I'm determined we're going to complete this. We're going to. Distributed power remote disabled. Yeah, but you don't seem to be able to get into the. We've got like more options. Distributed power. It doesn't let me click on anything, so. I'm not sure how I can enable that. Still showing zero at the rear. Right, we're going downhill still. Let's back off the power. Wait 10 seconds and then we put some dynamic in. Like I said, it's not going to hold it, but it, it should help to slow our descent. Hopefully. Right, let's get some dynamic going. Let's put five in for now. Daniel, SCI I believe is Southern Counties Railways, which is like a Roblox game. I'm not too I favour with it myself. A few people have asked for it. You never know. I might I might end up doing it. I did say I was never going to do tracing videos on Dan Rail, but it kind of is all I do now. So <laughs> Although I am going to be doing some more vlogs and stuff, I promise. So if I whack the direct brake, independent brake, loco brake on, does that also kill my dynamic? It does. <coughs> and that, of course, shouldn't give me much brake force. So I'm going to put a little bit of train brake in, about 50%, just to see if I can stop this thing running away again. And if I can't stop it running away, I'm just going to let it run. Let's see how far we get. Yeah, the Dartmoor line. There we go. This might clue you in. Thank you, Deckard. Yeah, reopened on the... Uh, was it beginning of this week? It reopened the Dartmoor line. I wanted to get down there and have a little go um, on that and do some videos, but trying to get time off work at the moment has been a bit of a nightmare. Go. Right, so 50% brake hasn't done anything to curb the speed. What's the SUP brake position? Oh, it says service zone. HO. I don't know what those braking positions are, but let's try them. Making a real pig's ear of this, I'm, I'm aware of that. Yeah, Daniel, I'd imagine Jeff. I thought Jeff might have a video about about it pretty quickly. So anyone that knows their American trains, is this normal to be able to have full brakes on and not be able to slow the train down? Because that like it, it just doesn't seem right to me. It's almost like the, the train doesn't have enough braking force and therefore shouldn't be running. 
handbrake time, yeah. <laughs> Be whacking the whole thing in reverse. Driving significantly over speed limit. And my brakes are hundred percent, it's not slowing down. Yeah, John, is it something I'm doing wrong? Because you seem to know quite a lot about the American stuff. Is it something I'm doing wrong or is this you know, yeah, it doesn't doesn't seem to make sense to me. Kind of, there's got to be a button I'm not pressing or something like that. I mean, what if one of these signals were on? How would I, how would I stop if one of these signals were on? Jay, use the other brake. What brake? <laughs> I've got, I've got my independent brake set to full. I've got my. Um, Train brake set to full, I got my dynamic brake set to full. There are multiple brakes. Yeah, I think I think I've got them all set to full, Jay. I only know what from watching YouTube, my way out of my depth too. I mean, to be fair, it, it's probably like prototypical behaviour. I'm using that word again, prototypical. It, it probably is supposed to do this, but it kind of like doesn't feel right. But I'm now, this is a runaway. You know, I'm, I'm completely out of control of this train. Although if I go into emergency, it'll probably stop because it did earlier. Keep the loco brake on bail off. Pull it towards the back of the train and hold it there whilst using the dynamic brake on full. So that actually kind of has a lock back position. So how do I keep it keep it in that position? Oh I see, if I hold that down the dynamics coming back in. Right, that kind of makes a bit more sense. So what keyboard command holds that down? Yeah, no, Jay, my brakes are definitely cut in. Yeah, Fern, that makes sense. That's, that's kind of working now. The dynamic has come back in, which I wasn't getting before. Not that it's really slowing us down. Yeah, there's, there's got to be a keyboard command that overrides this rather than me kind of having to hold it. Yeah, because it's not, it's not latching in. We're well and truly speeding, we're running away. Hopefully we'll start going uphill in a minute. Stop at location 6.4 miles, it's not going to happen. There's, there's got to be a keyboard command to hold this down. Should I have a quick look at my phone? There's, there's got to be a keyboard command to hold that down. Yeah, not not that it's actually really helping to slow us down, to be honest. Um, this is a 
a bit worrying. Yeah, we've got uh, air brake setup lead cut in, which is exactly how it should be. The DP remote disabled, I, I don't know what that's about. That's like the um, distributed power. There's not, I can't change that. There's nothing I can do to change that. Handbrake. I press the handbrake button. Yeah, but the handbrake wouldn't give us any more braking force than what we've already got, surely. I think when we get to about three miles out, I'm just going to whack the emergency brake and hope for the best. Oh dear, oh dear. It's going to be a bad day at the office. There's a 40 coming up as well in like one. Yeah. Dad rail, D rail. You can see it happening. It's, it's so going to happen. I'm going to whack the emergency brake in, I think. Does that actually slow us down, mate? I can slow it down on emergency, but not full service. Yeah, John, I think that's because I had the, the dynamic brake is pin, the uh, loco brake is pinned back. I believe that's the brake cylinder pressure is just on the locomotive there, not on the um, not on the whole train. How long have we got to destination? 2.9 miles. Right, I'm going to try and recharge that brake because I know it's going to take a long time for the brake pressure to come back up. We'll see if we can do it without stopping. Pete, if only we had someone who drove trains driving this one. <laughs> I must say, Pete, I've never been in this situation before. The brakes tend to work on my trains. We got to where we were going a bit quicker. Hopefully that brake's going to release in a minute because the brake pipe pressure's coming up quite nicely. So we, we might have it back under control. So like we're under control. We're winning. We're winning. Pull the fuse on the computer and see if that improves things. It probably would. In my, in my experience, it probably would. Right, brake pipe's coming up. Yeah, probably shouldn't pull the dynamic brake back that quickly. Now something's beeping at me and I've got a green light. I've got all the safety systems turned off because I don't understand them. Which is pretty bad, I know. Right, let's give it some power. Uh, that one. We're pulling against the brake at the moment because the brake pipe is still at like 65. That needs to rise a bit further. So I think I'm going to have to go back and watch some other people play this that got a little bit more experience than me and just see how they handle the train coming down the hill. Come on, come on. Oh, slip. Let's put sand down. Um, sand is X, isn't it, I want to say. It's slipping because we're pulling against the brake. ruining the wheel sets. It's like we will get to our destination, we will, 
We'll just drag it in. We'll get out and push it if we have to. take the power back a little bit. I say we're pulling against the brake because the brake's not fully recharged. I watched the video Daniel on American signals and um, complicated is one of the words I would use. I'm sure it's like anything though, once you get used to it, it's probably pretty straightforward. Check your points are set. <laughs> what, what one was it? That was the, um, that was the, when we were doing the 3 on 3 out of Celeste Depot, we derailed because the points weren't set. I'm not making the same mistake twice. Well, maybe. It looks like it's bugging out as well because it's not bringing up the um, the rear pressure. Your manager might be asking what happened to the wheels and brakes. On the I don't think we've got any brakes left. And the wheels are knackered. Probably get a gold medal now in the scoring system in this. <laughs> yeah, we're accelerating again. 1.2 miles to destination. Let's just hop into the Discord one last time, see what's going on over there. Nothing has changed on the Discord server. Nothing has changed. If you're not already, guys, then uh, link in the description below to the Discord server, where you will also find me posting. Um, me and we've got a couple of other train drivers in there posting our day-to-day -day lives as train drivers with pictures and stuff to sort of talk about what trains we're working and various other bits of information and stuff like that so it's uh, all useful stuff so if you're interested in um, kind of finding out more about the job and about the railway industry in general or just talking trains or train sim or anything railway related then it'd be really great to see you over on the um, discord server uh, and like i said before you'll find the link for that in the description below <laughs> Daniel, at this point it's going to be Flintstone style, legs out of the cab really packed. <laughs> it may well be, it may well be. Right, I am going to take that power right back. Because we are supposed to stop in like 0.9 miles. My frame rate is horrible. I'm getting... Um, 26 FPS at the moment. I've been getting a solid 60 throughout the whole room. Now it's dropped to like 26 FPS. So you can probably see in the stream it's a bit stuttery. I love that comment Flintstone style. Absolutely love that. Wilma! Also, guys, if you are um, one of my Patreon supporters, I know a few of you are in the stream tonight here support me on Patreon, then we will be doing a um, Patreon special live stream uh, probably sometime next week, but I'll announce that through the um, normal channels, through Patreon and through Discord. And if you don't support me on Patreon and you want to, then patreon.com forward slash Debra. So something went beep, and now I've got a yellow and a red. We're supposed to stop in like 800 yards, I'm still in 20. I, I kind of, oh, and there's a red signal coming up as well. So I kind of feel like we should just chuck a load of brake in and hope for the best. So we're on 54%. Come on. It's beginning to slow, it's beginning to slow. Oh, 
oh, I'm kind of looking at the speed and looking at the distance and thinking, is that going to work? Is that going to work? That could be like a perfect stop if it does. Uh, should we leave it alone? What do we reckon? Oh, Fern, fantastic. Oh, I'm releasing that. If it releases in time, it should do. Yeah, that'll be with Anglia then on the uh, Stadler Flirts. Uh, presuming, assuming it's in the UK then, <laughs> that'll be with Anglia. Oh, you drove underground trains before? Oh, we, we needed you here on the Bakerloo Line stream. You'd be able to tell us all about it. Why did you make the change from underground to um, mainline, if you don't mind, mind me asking? Dadra, when is the MFS 2020 stream? What is MFS 2020? Oh, like, I'm going to end up spadding like, right at the last minute, aren't I? Come on, stop, 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 please stop, please stop, please stop, please stop, pretty please. <laughs> please, please, please. I think we're going to be alright. Wait. Stop. Oh, it, what, does it really want me to go forward and have a 13 yards? But the signal's in like 19 yards, so that's going to give me like 5 yards to play with, 6 yards to play with, wow. Okay. Right. So, you want me to stop 6 yards away from the signal? We're on a downhill gradient as well. Let's just release the brakes and kind of maybe let it roll a little bit. Flight Sim 20. Oh, objective complete. Oh, hey, there we go. Oh, look at that for speeding. Wow, that's um, that's mega speeding. Yeah, emergency brake application there. Zoink, and another one there. Oh, we got a bronze medal. We got a bronze medal. Not too bad. Not too bad. Mega Minor 10, hi Richard, love the streams, a resident of Hastings myself. I feel sorry for you living in Hastings. No, it's not a bad place, is it? It's not It's not a bad place, I shouldn't say that. It's not a bad place. Did you see the Black Five come through today, though, Mega Minor? I called it at West St. Nellis, just as I was getting off my train, uh, coming home from work. So, let's go over to that view there, which is working. Thank you very, very much for watching what was a, an interesting stream. And it goes to show, I mean, I'm, I'm a mainline train driver in the UK and most of the time on train sim, train sim I don't have any problems with the driving and stuff. But you don't know what you don't know. So obviously I've done something completely wrong coming down those hills to, 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 to allow the train to run away like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of in the zone where, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I can drive this train. It's not an issue. So I'm what they call um, in, in the unconscious incompetent uh, zone. So before before I went into this, I was unconsciously incompetent. So I didn't know that I couldn't do it. Uh, having done this, I am now consciously incompetent <laughs> because I am consciously aware that I am incompetent to drive this train. So the next stage of development would be to become consciously competent, which means training and then be aware that I can do it. Blah. You get it. You get it. And then you can become unconsciously competent, which is then you have micro sleeps, which we spoke about a bit earlier on. But, um, yeah, impromptu stream just to check the settings and everything and make sure everything was working. So, uh, big thank you to Dovetail Games. I mean, all, all the things I've pulled up are, are more my driving than anything else. I think the route looks superb. I think, generally speaking, that the game physics are really, really good. Um, like I say, they did give me the key for free um, for the game, but they haven't told me what to say and what not to say. In actual fact, they've done the complete opposite. They've said, please be honest, and if you don't like it, say you don't like it. But no, I've, I think they've done a really good job of it, and I think it's really nice. 
Um, tomorrow we're in the West Cornwall local. That'll be at the usual time of 20.30. That's half past eight. Uh, West Cornwall local, local for that one. Hope to see you all there. Um, if you haven't already, then please do hit that like button. 10,000 subscribers by Christmas would be awesome to share the video, share the channel, post it in your groups, get the name out there. Really don't want to do the washing up on Christmas Day. And if you're not already, uh, it would be really great to see you in the Discord server. Link, of course, is in the description below. So, hope to see you in the West Cornwall local stream tomorrow. That would be absolutely awesome. Thank you for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it, guys. And um, as always, until next time, create, share, and inspire.